everyone. Uh, just uh, beside me here, I have um, a jackfruit uh, tree, uh, Artocarpus uh, heterophyllus. And um, jackfruit is uh, being uh, used as a demonstration uh, crop in uh, our project, developing uh, the next generation uh, orchards um, in Northern Australia. And this project is in counterpart with DAF, Department of Agricultural and Fisheries in uh, Queensland, uh, the Northern Territory Department and the Western Australia Department. And um, this video is uh, being supported by the uh, Cooperative Research Center for Developing Northern Australia. As I said, jackfruit is being used as a demonstration crop and what we're going to talk today is about propagation. Propagation in plants can be uh, a sexual propagation through seeds and uh, here we have one of the seeds of the jackfruit and um, when we need to sow these seeds for the um, sexual propagation, the macropile scar, that is a small dot that we find on one side of the seed, has to face down our tray with uh, the growing media that usually is uh, koya or other types of um, potting mix or, for example, peat. And uh, this is the easiest way to propagate jackfruit by seeds with sexual propagation. The downsides of this type of propagation is that we don't obtain genetically the same tree, but can have some genetic differences because the flower is open pollinated. Here's why part of the project was looking at different ways to propagate the jackfruit uh, using vegetative propagation in a, a sexual way. When we want to clone exactly the same plant, we're using this type of propagation. For example, we tried different types of propagation like cuttings and air layering, and uh, we tried different types of grafting. We tried a V-graft and we tried a side veneer graft or a modified side veneer graft used in the Fairchilders Botanical Gardens. We tried um, a chip graft that is used in Vietnam and um, we tried cuttings. And um, also the Department of uh, Northern Territory, they tried hydroponics and they tried uh, tissue culture. That is uh, one of the practice that is being used in the late years to propagate plants. But uh, tissue culture comes with a cost. And um, the Department of Agricultural and Fisheries here at, uh, in Queensland, we tried propagation with cuttings and for us was the best way to propagate jackfruit by cloning. In say that, all the techniques that we tried, they were working well. For a backyard grower, for example, it could be enough propagating jackfruit with a layering or grafting, but in terms of nursery prospectings and build up an industry, we decide to go with the cuttings because for us, they were the most proficient way to propagate in high numbers. The first step for uh, propagating by cuttings is um, find the right material, the right cutting material. And what we're looking for is actually a nice branch where we have a um, green, semi-soft, soft wood with the final tip fully formed, like here, that is not really a juvenile wood, but is nice and green, but nice and green. And uh, this is the type of cutting that we're looking at. The first step, uh, it will be to remove all these excessive leaves that they're going to take away energy from, uh, from our cutting. And uh, this is 
the cutting that we like to use for our experiment. At this point, we can uh, collect the cutting and uh, put in a bucket where we will seal the bucket for transport to the facility where we're going to do the cutting. Cuttings are placed in a bucket of water with a solution of 1% of chlorine and left there for a couple of minutes. After a few minutes, the cuttings are ready for the preparation before the second treatment with scholar fungicide. The aim is to leave four to five leaves maximum in our cuttings. And uh, so what we are doing is trim back the cutting and cut into half through the midrib for the photosynthetic process when the cuttings are placed inside of the humidigrade. We leave in the cuttings on the dry rack for a couple of minutes just to dry up a little bit from uh, the solution uh, water in scholar. Now, the final preparation, it takes place here where we have two different uh, cutting tools that we can use. We can use, you can use other cutting tools like secateurs, but they have to be really well sharp because what do you want to do is have a neat, sharp cut through the node of your cutting. I'm going to use a grafting knife, but we can use cheaper cutters, um, you know, what you can find actually in the stores. And uh, the difficult part and the most, uh, the difficult part and the most complicated part has to be is this one here, where we need to try to do um, cut between uh, the node from one side to the other side of the internode. And uh, as you can see, this time I cut opposite of the leaf axle. You can cut on the same side of the leaf axle. There is no difference for what we find in our experiment. After that, the only next step that we're going to do is to take the cutting and uh, use the hormone powder. In this kind of case, we're using an IBA 3%, that is the one that for us work the best when we did our trials. Just keep in mind that you, there are uh, different types of hormones. They can be powder hormones or otherwise they can be gel hormones and they have different concentrations. As I said, we're using the three IBA. Now, what is left to do is insert the cutting into the rooting hormone. And uh, at this point, I'm ready to insert my cutting in one of the two uh, plugs that we choose for our experiment. One is um, called Jiffy plug or a Preforma plug. is uh, made by Koya or Pete, depends what do you prefer. These are made by Koya and are or otherwise, we can use another Jiffy expandable plug that uh, same same is uh, can be made by Koya or uh, with 
um, peat and uh, this ones here they need to be rehydrated so we have to leave in water for a little bit of time and what you will obtain after that we leave the plug in water for about 15-20 minutes is an expanded plug. What we're doing, we insert our cutting inside of the plug and we're positioning uh, our cutting with the plug in the plug rack. When you have processed all the cuttings, place the plug rack into the misting chamber. We set our chamber heat mat to 27 degrees Celsius to maintain the plugs at the same temperature and the air temperature has to be maintained between 24 and 33 degrees Celsius. The misters are set to come on for 20 seconds every 15 minutes between 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. Once the cuttings have developed a good root system, which will take approximately four weeks, repot them into the forestry tubes with a core per light mix a 2 to 1 ratio or Corp and perlite to one to one ratio. Keep the cuttings in the forestry tubes for a week or two in the misting chamber to acclimatize. After this, move the tubes out into the greenhouse to acclimatize to slightly drier condition. Once the cuttings have developed a good root system, they are repotted once more this time into 5 liters or bigger containers. Keep the cuttings in the greenhouse and water accordingly to the conditions to allow the cuttings to develop a better root system. Before the cuttings are planted in the field, they have to go through an hardening off period of about two weeks. At this point, the cuttings are ready to be planted in the field. Here we are with an example of 17 months old jackfruit cuttings planted on a trellis system at 3 meter spacing.